So let's look at examples of this. So let's imagine that we have a case where we have an antecedent surface. By this, I mean a surface that was exposed. Maybe it's the top of a previous platform, or maybe it's a, a block of granite. It doesn't matter. It's a surface that was not available for corals to grow before. Sea level goes up, so it can be a relative sea level change. And what happened is we are in what is known the startup phase that we've talked about before. So the corals or the carbonates start to colonize the top of this uh, surface, but they don't produce enough to really fill the accommodation completely. And then they go into the catch-up phase. Now they can, they can basically maintain their population in such a way that they can produce enough sediment to keep growing generation after generation and keep up with sea level and stay at essentially sea level. So this is the catch up phase. Then there comes a point where sea level stops rising or it still rise, but at a much slower pace. And then we are in the so-called keep up phase for the coral. Now the population growth is such that they can fill all of the accommodation. They keep up with new accommodation being created. And what happens when, when they do this? Well, they produce so much sediment that this sediment needs to be exported laterally. So not only does the system aggrade, now it prograde as well. And this is, of course, what happens during the HST, the high stand trap. And when base level falls, that platform is then exposed and we have a subaural exposure happening and production of carbonate now shifts to the edge of the platform and we're back to relatively small factories on the edge of that old platform and smaller volumes of, of carbonate production. So all of this can be understood thanks to ecologic uh, rules like the, the sigmoidal growth. Now there's something that happens as well in carbonates is if the system cannot keep up with sea level or catch up with sea level, eventually it drowns. Imagine that, raise the, that base level is rising very fast and that the ecological conditions are less than ideal for carbonates, for autotrophs. Let's say maybe there's too much nutrient or maybe the turbidity of the water is not ideal or maybe just the water temperature is too cold. So carbonates grow, but not fast enough, which means that each generation will find itself a little bit deeper because base level is rising faster than it can catch up with. And that means it will have less light, less light penetrates deeper in the water, which means because there is less light, it also means there is less growth. So that means that the next generation will be even deeper, et cetera, et cetera, until the carbonate platforms are drowned. They're, they're dead, there's no more production. And then on top of this, you can have, as suggested on this diagram, maybe some plastic that prograde, or you know, it could just stay like this. And this is a situation that does happen in carbonates. So if we look at the, um, if we look at the different uh, system tracts, we can see that during the HST, because we have the rate of production on the rim, that's the GR here, and the rate of production on the platform far exceed the rate of accommodation change, you typically see progradation and aggradation on carbonate systems. Now, during the TST, the transgressive system track, typically we see the reverse. The rate of production on the rim and the rate of production of carbonates on the platform is less than accommodation change. So what we see is backstepping and retrogradation of your system. During the low stand track, what happened is you have uh, the, the preceding surface exposed that could be karstified 
and the production of the platform is now limited to a rim. So you almost have only reef and very little of the other uh, sediments being formed because you have a low stand wedge. This is a, a very narrow carbonate system that lives right on the edge of the platform. And because accommodation is low, you typically will have progradation because the rate of, of uh, production of the rim exceeds accommodation creation. And of course, you also have at the top of this a sequence boundary and, a, um, and, and basically uh, an exposure. Everything I've talked about, you can apply one way or another to uh, clastics. But there are two situations that are unique to carbonates. When you have a high stand tract, it is possible that the rate of production of the rim, where you typically have autotroph organisms like corals or others, that this is really high. So you have a lot of production on the rim, so you have aggradation and progradation on the rim. But it's possible that the lagoon, so the, the platform itself, does not produce as much as the rim. And if that happens, you create what is known as an empty bucket, where you don't have enough sediment production to fill the lagoon. So you create a lagoon and that is the empty bucket. You cannot have this in clastic systems. This is unique to carbonates. It's a geometry really unique to carbonates. And drowning, when basically the rate of production of the rim and the platform is much less than the change in accommodation, is also unique to carbonates. You cannot drown a clastic system because clastic systems are not alive. They don't require light to grow but you can drown a carbonate system. Okay, what have we seen so far? We've seen that the rate of accommodation creation can typically be exceeded by the rate of carbonate growth if the reef is healthy, if the, the ecological conditions are ideal for the reef. We've also seen, thanks to this law of sigmoidal growth, that production of carbonate lags behind accommodation creation at the beginning. Okay, so there's a phase where the population is small enough that the, you will create more of the accommodation that you cannot really completely fill. So that's an important concept. And this actually leads to some specific stacking pattern, which is to say that during the transgressive system track, we have retrogradation of the carbonates, but towards the end of the uh, eustatic or base level rise, we tend to then catch up and fill accommodation and have progradation. And so that's why the HST is in carbonate the thickest of the system tracts. And we've also talked about the very specific pattern that you can see in carbonates that are unique to carbonates that you cannot see in clastics, like the empty bucket and this concept that you can drown a carbonate system. So in our next class, we'll look more in depth at the concept of system tract in carbonates and how we can recognize them in seismic. <music>